another notch. So that they flow into the, the very bottom end, the last three miles just before it dumps into the bay out there into the Bering Sea. Okay. Uh, okay, is the river drop? What's that? How long is the river? Oh, it's probably about, uh, about four miles. But, uh, a lot of sockeyes. A couple of bears there walking across it. Two there, sow there, three cubs. There's a couple extra uh, boo-boos around here. Yeah, this is kind of their home, but uh, they're, they're very tolerable of us. Seem to be. Yeah, they let us do our thing, we let them do their thing. Yeah, it's uh, pretty fascinating. It's all part of the magic. Just exactly what you imagined. Yeah, it's a lot of places in the world you can fish around all sorts of different animals, but uh, this is one of the most special places to fish around the brown bears. Come over here, buddy. You want to get away from that tree? I'll let you out. Easy, Spanky. That's called a camera fish. Come to me. Look at the gut on this thing. Oh, he's got a lot of juice in him still. Ain't bad. Are there any dark salmon? No. No, no there are any bad on this edition of Fly Fish TV with Kelly Gallup, we join Jeff Fender to fish rainbows on the Battle River in Alaska. It is as special a place as there is in the angling world. Native rainbows are here to feed behind the spawning sockeye salmon, and Kelly and Jeff move amongst the bears, searching for likely suspects. I got a taste of the big water earlier this in the last couple of days, and. This is a little bit more than I'm used to here, smaller water. Sure. I'm not quite used to having 15 bears around me when I'm fishing, but I got the point. Don't outfish the bear. There you go. <laughs> it so. is a little different. We're, uh, we're fishing a little tighter water. These are some of the upper drainages where a lot of the sockeye come into these systems to spawn. You can see there's quite a few sockeye spread throughout the run here, and the, the rainbow trout will really stack in behind those quite nicely. We should be able to sight some of these fish up. Um, Again, because it's, it's not as big a water, we have the ability that the fish can run downstream mm -hmm. or upstream or jump right up in the air. So we can always walk down with that fish once we get them hooked up. You uh, re-rigged me a little bit. Same rig, basically, we're still pegging, but you put a smaller bead on. Yeah, just to imitate the sockeye salmon mm -hmm. egg. Uh, yeah. Some of the other streams where different salmon are spawning, they'll, they'll represent with different size eggs. So I heard Dan last night say he had to go paint eggs. You, uh... <laughs> you guys got your all got your own formula for the eggs, don't you? Ooh, he's moving in on us pretty tight. We do, we do. Each of the guides probably knows about more about uh, ladies' fingernail polish than most petitions do. <laughs> <laughs> you can imagine the looks when we get going in asking for something in a light pink. Yeah, you can have something in a baby blue. <laughs> Right. Sure you're a fishing guy. Sure you are. There he is. There First time by. Nice oh, fish. he liked it. Let's see. Oh, oh, unbuttoned. Oh, tree branch, too. I was going to say, that would work, though. First trip by, like we were talking about, too. Oh, look at him out there. He's mad. See him? <laughs> he's out there shaking. He's about back to, in, he's shaking gonna come his in head. and jump in a second. <laughs> I'd say the egg switch worked. I think there's another one right there. You know, it's a unique fishery, though, in the sense that, that that we peg these beads away from the hook. Right. Yeah. Any other fishery where the, the fish takes the hook into his mouth is not as critical as to which way you set right. the hook. Right. Dragging it into there. You know, a lot of people have question marks about that hook not being on the egg. Mm-hmm. Uh, that they're trying to fatten up for their winter months, too. Um, but if you use a traditional glow bug or an uh, egg fly, mm -hmm. the fish tend to swallow those and get them deep-throated hookups, mm -hmm. uh, which isn't very healthy on the fish. So this is a very healthy means of fishing to these fish with the, the eggs pegged away from the hook. Yeah, you always get them on the outside. Correct. Well, the hook's usually. never taken into them. So it's, it, again, it's unique <coughs> that you have to bring the hook to the fish. Oh, 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 God, oh that's, him. that's him. That's him. That's him, third line. Huh? I wasn't even fishing. <laughs> This might be the warden. Look how far apart his ears are. Yeah, I learned a while ago that that's his island. He doesn't like people being on his island. 
talk to you. Chased me through the bush one day. He didn't even know where we were at, but you could just hear him just bashing through and the trees be moving. Kelly, we got this nice dark fish right down here where these waters V together. Yep. You can kind of see the riffle water that starts over here and the riffle yep. water off the gravel bar we're on. And in the most nervous area, the biggest chop to the water, there's a nice dark fish sitting right in that yeah, I center it. section. I see him right there. Perfect. And he's moving back and forth. Yeah, I saw him when you first pointed him out. He moved yep. all the way over there. That's I, a big fish. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be a hard hook set. Now he's moving. <sighs> they're just moving all they're That's moving crazy. up on this thing like crazy there's one way at the top can't see him I hate to slap that indicator through it that's on his beak there he is there we are, there we are. Oh. <laughs> around the reel good around save around the reel good save we got some sticks along that back wall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hi, Rod. Nice job. Nice job. Look at them push up. Look at all those rainbows yeah, right there. Yeah, they're stacked in there, too. Look at those about Yeah, but those are the them. sulkers. Those are going to be hard to, <laughs> hard to hook up. Come here. And it was a good downstream hook set. I got you if you want to hold them right there. Big old leopard. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Perfect. Nice. Perfect. That's a nice one. How about rainbow. that big old yeah. hooker? The hook is right where it's supposed to be. Corner of his cheek. Stop that. Nice fish. Nice. Well done. Well done. <laughs> and the warden didn't even come and get him. The warden didn't bother us. We like that. <laughs> Everything's Thanks, good. Let's go get another one. I think there's a couple extras out there. Yeah, did you see all them move when you... Uh... Oh my God, when I came <laughs> I hadn't Look, shown you those yet. They're just lying on that right wall. There. Can you see those? That whole shallow... Yeah. Those are solid Look at all the shadows. <laughs> are you fishing? Yeah. No, I'm catching. Yeah. No, he's catching right now. Oh, oh, farming. <laughs> He's farming right now. <laughs> that was somebody. That was a good darkie. <laughs> well, that was what we wanted. How about your guy right on the far side of that river? See, that's him. He's, He's not real happy with me. Our... I think so. so. We still got another big one over there. Yeah, see him on the far side of that riffle? Yep. And there's another one moved in right there. Perfect. Kelly, what line, uh, what weight rod are you throwing, first of all? I got a seven weight. Seven weight? It seems yep. to be pretty comfortable with some of these larger fish. Yeah, it's it's a it's actually a new series I just came up with. It's called the Bank Robber. It's a it was designed as a streamer rod. And, and then uh, you've matched that with what type line? It's it's uh this is a new line. It's actually this is the first one out of the press. It's a new line I developed for scientific game. It's a nymphing line. You can see it's got an orange tip on it. I noticed that, and that's what made me ask it. Actually, it's great for strike detection. It's got a, it's actually got a 1.5 over, so it's a six, a six weight to 7.5 in the head. Gotcha. So it's super easy, you know, just to flip out there and. And a shorter head where you're not casting a pile of line yeah. out there. Well, that could be very versatile up here in Alaska. We got one, we got one. Nice reach on that one. Watch that tree snake. Oh. Having trouble getting through this compound currents right there. It kept <laughs> sweeping my, it puts a big belly in my. Don't Just watch there. that one snag is all. You're clear, you're clear. Come, 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 come. There, come you, go. there you go. This fish is a little hot. A little hot. That's what I grew up in. In Michigan, they're all trees everywhere, you know? Almost impossible to put them on the bank. Come here. It's another great rainbow here, Kelly. Look at that fatty, huh? Oh, come here. Look at that fatty. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah, that's a nice plump hen there. Look at that belly on her, though. She has been eating some eggs. Hey. Oh, come here, darling. Come here, darling. No terra firma. Getting to reach for that one. Yeah. <laughs> Holy smokes. 
I didn't think he had it in him. When we return to Fly Fish TV with Kelly Gallup, we join another of the Alaska Sportsman's Lodge guides and take a closer look at beef. It goes all the way down, eight millimeter and six millimeter. <laughs> That's it for this edition of Fly Fish TV with Kelly Gallup. We hope you enjoyed the show and that you'll remember our sponsors and guests who made it possible. A special thanks to Jeff Fender and Todd Kalitri for guiding us and the Alaska Sportsman's Lodge for hosting our trip. And as usual, thanks to Kelly Gallup for sharing his fishing knowledge and friends so that we all can be better angles.